this is Sarah from Piggy Pole and Aerial Fitness. I'm going to go through some pointers for your press ups or push ups. Um, I'm going to cover if you get any wrist pain, um, hypermobility or hyperextension, some stretches, foam rolling, and a few different types of press ups that you can do. I'm currently doing the 25 press ups in 25 days and I will be talking about rest as well. So let's get started. So first, before we're gonna try doing any press ups, we need to just mobilize our wrists. Uh, to begin with, we can just do some wrist circles. Now you can do fingers circling, uh, but actually what's gonna help mobilize your wrists a lot more is focusing on circling the wrists itself instead of the fingers. So if you imagine your fingertips are going to stay where they are, you can start doing this by literally pushing your wrist forwards and then back and coming back to the centre, side to side. Once you're comfortable with this, you want to try and do the same thing, but actually circle your wrists. If you can do both at the same time, do. Uh, for most people, I think this movement takes a little bit of practice. So. Practice, I used to practice while I was sitting at traffic lights, just you might find that you do a lot of clicking, but this is a much better way to mobilise and warm up your wrists. So just do a few of these both ways. Uh, we also want to mobilise our elbows. So arms to the side, just do some elbow circles and the other way. And then we're going to do shoulders as well. So uh, we're going to do chicken wings to begin with. So to do this properly, so you're really focusing on your shoulders, you want to have a posterior pelvic tilt, engage your core, hands and shoulders, and we're going to do chicken wings, as big a circles as you can. The reason we do a posterior pelvic tilt here and engage your core is it means that your back doesn't absorb any of the movement, all of your shoulder moves. So both directions for these, and then we're going to do the same with our arms being straight. So big circles, and then changing direction. Uh, you can also warm up fingers if you like. I like to swing my arms from side to side, wiggling fingers and thumbs, and out in front. And you can pull knuckles back towards you as well. So this should ensure your arms, wrists, shoulders are all ready to do some exercise. So let's cover um, some common problems and issues that people come across when doing press ups. One is hypermobility, uh, which generally is hyperextension. We're talking in particular the elbow. So if you hold your arm out straight, if your elbow comes up here at the joint, um, that is hyperextension, it's also known as being double jointed. Uh, if this applies to you, you just need to take extra care doing press ups or, and anything where your arm's going to be straight and taking weight. Um, so for your press ups, I'll cover form in a minute, um, but when you are doing any sort of press ups, you want to make sure that when you are your arms are straight and you're at the top of the press up you want to make sure that you don't lock out your arms so unfortunately you've got a little bit more to concentrate on than the rest of us and you want to make sure that your arms straight or has a micro bend so just make sure that when you're at the top you don't lock your arms out so that your elbow goes the other way um, you're just at higher risk of injuring yourself um, and ultimately, like worst case scenario, dislocation. So we just want to strengthen, for your hypermobility, um, you want to strengthen the muscles below the elbow as well as above, and this way it's going to protect your joint and prevent that from happening. So another common uh, problem that people find doing press-ups is they have wrist pain. Most commonly this is because everything that we do has our wrists in flexion and for push-ups we want to have our wrists extended so a lot of the time it's actually mobility um, or our flexibility on our wrists 
So I'm going to go through a couple of pointers um, and I'll also explain good form in your standard press up. Uh, so to make sure that you're not putting your wrists at a poor angle, we want to make sure that when we're doing our press ups, um, and if you are having wrist pain, I suggest that you start on your knees. So start in a full plank, you want to make sure your hands are directly under your shoulders, hands should be shoulder width apart. Um, you want to then lower your knees down where they are. You want to make sure your fingertips are spread and your middle fingers should be pointing forwards. So this means that you're not doing your press ups, fingers pointing in, elbows going out to the side because this puts a lot of strain on the wrist. From here you want to make sure as well that you really grip the ground. Okay, So this is going to engage your forearms and your wrists and get you ready to take the load. From here you want to try and externally rotate your arms, so the crease of your elbow should come round and point forwards as well. Then when you're doing your press ups, try and keep your elbows tucked in, you want to make sure your core is engaged and you want to tuck your tailbone under so that you're doing a posterior pelvic tilt throughout. From there, lower down as far as you can and come back up. This should really help with uh, any wrist pain. You've got a few different options as well. If that's still too much on the wrists, you can do your press ups on fists. So you wanna make sure that your palms are facing each other. Again, make sure that your hands are directly under your shoulders. So they should only be shoulder width apart and you don't wanna have them too far forwards or too far back. So again, you can either do these in your full plank or lower knees down and come down, still keeping the elbows tucked in by the side and the external rotation of the arms. And the last modification uh, for those of you who have wrist pain during press-ups, um, grab yourself a towel, you're going to fold it up um, as high or as flat as you'd like, the thicker it is the less of an extension on your wrist you're going to have and then hopefully you can progress to having it thinner till you don't need it anymore. But again, index, sorry, middle fingers pointing forwards, hands directly under shoulders and you can place the butt of your hand onto the towel and have your fingers on the ground. Remember to spread the fingers and grip the floor and then you can do press ups here and again that should reduce the amount of pain in your wrists. So now I'm going to show you a few different press ups that you can do. Um, I've gone over form for your standard press ups on keeping your elbows to your side. Uh, I am just going to go over um, your like full regression so you can place your knees on the floor. Um, but if you start in a plank placing your knees on the floor here and this is still too much um, weight for you to do press ups here, you can bring your knees in a bit and then concentrate on getting your chest as low as you can. So these are our standard press ups. Try and make sure that you've got that posterior pelvic tilt, engage your core and keep your back nice and flat, keeping elbows tucked by the side. Next we've got scapular press ups, these are one of my favourites. Again you're going to start in your normal press up position, but instead of bending the arms, we're going to keep them nice and straight. You're going to squeeze your shoulder blades together and let your chest sink, but keeping your back flat. And then pushing through your hands away from the floor so your shoulder blades come apart and you're really allowing your upper back to round. So all the movement comes from our shoulder blades. Nothing else changes. Next, for a different variation, you can move your hands in a diagonal. Um, see how you go and how your wrists and shoulders handle this. So uh, again, you can do these on your knees or in a full plank. Um, you don't need to start with the diagonal being very big. So you can do these with your in sorry middle finger pointing forwards and still elbows tucked into the side. Obviously, however many you do on one side, you then want to do the same on the other side. If you feel that too much in your wrists, you can adjust 
and slightly turn your fingers outwards. Again, still make sure you're externally rotating with the arms. Keep those elbows tucked in. Another variation is you can have your hands wide, but we want to slightly turn them out and make sure our elbows are still going to come in by our sides. So this is going to work more of your scapula. So hands wide, fingers turn slightly out, but we're still going to externally rotate the arms and then tuck inwards. So now I've got some more advanced variations. We've got Chinese or triangle shapes, so you want to make this shape with your hands. I would suggest that you still spread your fingertips and help to help grip the floor. Uh, so to start with on these, either start on your knees or if you want to do full uh, plank, that's absolutely fine, but still start with your hands directly under your shoulders. So still try and keep your elbows tucked in. You should feel these work your triceps more. To progress this, move your hands closer to your knees and your shoulders are going to be more over the wrists. Another advanced option are inclined press-ups. So for this, you want to come back into your downward dog, move your hands closer towards you and then lean forwards. Keeping your elbows tucked in. Next up are dolphin press-ups. I really like these press-ups because you're actually moving uh, through the press-ups. So it, it puts your shoulder in a position of instability, so it has to work harder. So it's going to help build all the muscles that keep your ball and socket strong and nice and stable. Uh, I've got three different variations, so different levels of these, so if you've never done these before, start with the easiest and build up and progress to the hardest. So the easiest, we're going to start in downward dog. So get into your plank position, fingertips spread, hands directly under your shoulders, you then want to shift back, so you're pushing your heels into the floor, straight legs, shoulders back towards the knees. You want to lift your chin, we're going to bend the arms, we're going to scoop through and come into our cobra and then push back to our downward dog. So next level for these um, is we're going to not come up into a cobra. Uh, we actually want to try and hit the bottom of our press up and then press up, but so we have a middle stage, um, we're going to place our knees on the floor. So again, you want to come back into our downward dog, we're going to scoop through, come to the bottom of our press up, place knees on the floor and then push up and repeat. Hardest which is next, we're going to go back into our downward dog, we're going to scoop through to the bottom of our press up and then push up. So make sure that your back stays nice and flat and your core is engaged. Last we've got archer press ups. You can do these on your knees, uh, we're going to have our wrists fairly wide you still want to have them at a level where they're below your shoulders, we're just going wider and you can have your middle finger pointing forwards or you can rotate your hands outwards slightly. Make sure your fingertips are really spread on this one and that you're gripping the floor. So, nice and wide and what we're going to do for these is we're going to bend to one side and come down as low as possible. So once we've done our press ups, we want to make sure that we stretch everything out afterwards. We can stretch our wrists on the floor. So come onto your knees. Uh, we're going to stretch with fingertips facing our knees. Hands again want to be shoulder width apart, fingertips spread, and then we can gently lean back. Now if this is too much on your wrists, you can do the same stretch off of the floor. So you have your arm out in front, Place your fingers over 
your other fingers and your thumb. So a lot of people forget to do the thumb. And then you want to pull back and try and put an even amount of pressure across all those fingers. You want to make sure that you do this on both sides. And we're going to do the other way, either on the floor, so fingertips facing the knees, but this time palms facing the ceiling. And then gently lean back. You do want to try and have an external rotation on the arm so that your arm's straight rather than trying to stretch out the wrist with bent elbows. And again, if there's too much to do on the floor, simply place the hand over the knuckles and pull towards you. And make sure you do both sides. Depending on whether you want to do this on the floor or not, we can clasp fingers and roll doing a figure of eight. You want to really make sure that you're pulling and pushing as much as you can to really stretch out. You want to do both directions. And if you're doing this one, you then want to straighten your fingers and clasp the other way and do that as well. If you haven't done it before, it's going to feel weird because you probably never quite stretch your wrists that way. Give your wrists a shake. If you want to stretch on the floor, we're going to have wrists facing each other fingertips spread and we're doing nice big circles. Make sure you're really pushing your shoulders to do a full circle all the way around and changing direction. Another brilliant uh, stretch for your forearms. You're going to make fists with your hands. You're going to punch knuckles. So you're going to end up having one fist in front of the other. Do it nice and this way. So punch your knuckles together. You're going to place tops of your hands and forearms on the floor and then you're going to try and keep the tops of your hands so you're only bending at the wrist and you're going to try and straighten your arms. So the first time I did this my arms were here. Um, we're aiming to have them straight and the most important thing is that you have your fingers curled. It helps if you put your thumb over the top. You want to make sure that you don't let your fingers uncurl while you're doing this stretch. So punch knuckles, Thumbs over the top, straightening out. Once you've done one side, you then need to come down and then you need to switch so the other knuckles in front. Same again. Next, you're probably really gonna be feeling your shoulders after all these press ups. So another brilliant stretch for this is you're gonna sit on your bum, feet in front. We're gonna have our hands behind us. Again, fingers spread, fingers pointing forwards. You're gonna scoot your bum forwards and then from here you're going to bend the arms. If you want to add to this, so you should feel this at the top of your shoulders, if you want to add to this, you're then also going to add squeezing your elbows together. So hold it there, take a few deep breaths, and try and relax those shoulders. We've got our more normal shoulder stretches, so you can bring one arm in front, other arm comes up, you either want to place it below the elbow joint or above, uh, keep the arm straight, make sure that your shoulder's not by your ear, so make sure you've dropped your shoulder first. If you can't feel the stretch in your shoulder, I want you to push back with the palm of your hand and then forwards with the shoulder, and you should feel the stretch out. So we're going to do this on both sides as well. And next we're going to stretch out our triceps. So you can do the bog standard arm down the middle of your back, you can hold on to the elbow, make sure your chin's lifted and pull down. If you can, hold on to hands or grab a cloth or a strap and hold on. If you can do this stretch, do because it actually stretches the top um, of the other shoulder as well as the tricep. So if you can hold on and then make sure your chin's lifted and then we're going to do the same on the other side. We're also going to stretch out our traps. Again, there's a few different stretches for this. Uh, so the standard one that most people are going to know is hand over the ear, gently pull down, push down with the opposite hand. Um, if you would rather, so be gentle with the pulling of your head. Um, if you'd rather not do that, what you can do is hold on to the wrist behind you, pull down on the arm and then tilt your head to the side. Again, we want to do both sides. If you do have um, a lack of mobility in your wrists and you want to do a little bit of extra conditioning um, to help increase the mobility and strength for your press-ups, um, there's a few things that you can do. There is an extensor 
exercise that I do in my warm up. Um, you want to have your arms out in front, pull your fingertips back towards you and make sure your fingertips are spread and then you're going to do full rotations. So this is going to help with your wrist flexibility but also the strength because we're strengthening our extensors. The other one that you can do, and again you can start on your knees and work up to a full plank, is actually having your fingertips facing your knees and just get used to holding the weight. So if you're comfortable here, start holding planks in this position. Another wrist extensor um, exercise that's really good because obviously we're always gripping but generally people don't strengthen their extensors. Um, you can buy these lovely resistance band for your fingers. Um, if you've got these, they generally come with their own instructions, but you want to place the loops over your nail bed, keep your wrist at a 45 degree angle and your fingers nice and straight, and then we're going to stretch out to the side as slowly and as controlled as possible. I hold mine for 20 seconds, but I had to build up to that, and then control the fingers coming back as well. The more you can do these, the better. Um, they really help with things like RSI, tendonitis, tennis elbow. Most of this is caused by imbalances in the forearm. So if you can strengthen your extensors um, to equal your, your flexion muscles, it's really going to help. To also help with all those issues, I would suggest um, that you try and roll the muscles out. So you can either use a tennis ball, I've seen people use wine corks, um, I've got a lacrosse ball and we have a yoga block. So you, when you're doing this you want to make sure that you roll out all the muscles underneath as well as on top of the forearm and going right up to your elbow as well. So when you find a, a sensitive or a tight spot just try and hold it there, do some deep breathing and really try and relax the muscles. So make sure you do the top as well can be a little bit tricky, you might need to move your body around to try and get into the right position and get into those muscles. Also do try moving the hand back and forth, you might find that you can get a little bit deeper into those knots. Um, if you don't have these and you have a foam roller, you can foam roll, but I suggest that you use the very edge. Um, so again, you want to use the end and you can roll, it's a little bit trickier, you want to try moving around. Last one, if you have a peanut, these are also really good to work out your forearms. Um, so I quite like these because although you still probably want a lacrosse ball, or you can use it to get into little bits, but you'll just use one end, you can actually roll and it's a lot easier to use than a foam roller. To get the top, you still have to do this weird backwards. <laughs> um, but they're really good to use after training or if you're ever feeling tight. I did mention at the start that I am doing uh, the 25 press-ups in 25 days. I just want to say um, I am not actually doing mine in 25 days back to back. I think it's really, really important that you allow yourself rest. Um, so if you've done your 25 press-ups, even if you need to break those up into little chunks throughout the day, uh, don't do your next batch, your next day, until you're fully recovered and you're not sore. Otherwise, we're talking about working out knots and tight muscles. If you don't, you're just going to keep, um, they're just going to keep getting tighter and you're increasing your risk of injury. So make sure that you have enough time off in between any workouts. So I hope this helps. If you've got any questions, drop a comment, um, please share it. Have a look at my page, Piggy Pole and Aerial Fitness. Last we've got our Archer... <laughs> Gone blank! I don't know what to say! <laughs> Another ad advanced... Oh, oh. <laughs> the... Oh, oh, oh.
Christ.